Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Helen Hughes from Mini Water Adventurers and I am your go-to person for all things fun during swimming lessons. So today we're going to talk about the fact that every child is unique. So in my book here that has just come out, um, in it's called Tender Steps. In the introduction, there is loads of information with regards to um, sort of uh, water wisdom, play-based activities, there's communication strategies, there are signs to stop, there is talking about flotation devices. So this is perfect for parents, but also swimming teachers have been finding this very useful as well. And throughout this book, it is starts from six months old and it's a whole program until they are learning their swim strokes. So as it says in the title, gradual and developmental swimming activities for babies and young children. It covers all those age groups. So it is springtime. I love spring. It means that I can get all my bugs and butterflies and birds and ladybirds and flowers and all sorts of cool things out I love a theme, as you know, and using a theme really helps that children are unique, aren't they? They are every child that you have come across walking poolside are completely different. So if you do use a theme, it means that you can use different things in order to help them depending on what they require. And I believe that it's our responsibility to actually mould to the child as opposed to the child moulding to us as the teacher. And in this particular part of the book, it talks about the, you know, the children being unique and also how we can uh, um, understand the signs and understand um, with regards to our influence of how we can then help them navigate their learn to swim journey. So it talks in here about um, embracing the element of surprise. It talks about encouraging that love, um, that love for swimming. It means that art of patience, tailoring the lessons to their needs. So please check out this book. Um, it gives so much information there and it is a rather thick book. So you certainly get, um, get lots out of it. But today I wanted to go through, because every child is unique, I have found that parent and toddler classes, preschool classes, and even the early stages, and to be honest, the older ones too, they love something that is different. And I have sourced, you know, lots of different sort of toys and props that aren't your traditional sort of bath toys that we tend to sort of use in swimming lessons because it makes sense because obviously they're um, they're made for water. But I've sourced lots of different things that you could use too. Now, I know it depends on budget. So, you know, this is something that um, I provide the ideas. And then if you choose to want to try it, then you that's your up to you if you want to do it <laughs> but here there i've got caterpillars and in my spring bundle that i have that on sale and purchase on my website it talks about the fuzzy little caterpillar changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly but you can always just do a caterpillar because this time of year there's loads of them of course because they're going to be changing into butterflies but this also means as well as that I have had loads of children that are very tactile and they love seeing things that are really quite cool. And then I saw this guy <laughs> and I was like, OK, that's really cool for swimming lessons. So I wouldn't use these maybe for massive group lessons because, of course, they can be quite expensive and to buy lots of. But if you've got a private lesson of where you've got um, a child that's very tactile and it's very sensory orientated, um, maybe it's something that if the child is very nervous, um, I have 
I am known for working with children um, that are very nervous in the water and these types of things really helps because it's a talking point they can sit on the stairs and they can just play with them they can splash around with them in the water they can feel them up and down their bodies um you know it's it's something that is really lovely for the child to sort of um break the ice if you like so this guy is really cool in the water they can also with the older ones you can have them um do streamline holding onto them they can have them on their backs and um, they can be you know balancing them and all sorts of things so what other caterpillars do i have um baker ross i love baker ross i actually use this in another theme as well of back to school of where for some reason they use caterpillars and back to school because of books <laughs> i saw these in baker ross they have different types of caterpillars but i love these because they're so colorful and again it's another talking point for parent and toddlers another learning opportunity for learning their colors um, and also it means that we can do different things with these they could be balancing they could be holding on to them as they are swimming doing pushing glides um, on their backs they could be balancing them as well so these are really great i love those also i have seen these little caterpillars here they are the sensory ones and i think these are probably one of my most popular uh, toys that i've used so i try and incorporate these in as much as i can depending um, on the time of the year um, but different things you can have for these they can be practicing their wall crawls going along and picking them as they're going along and then they have to put the caterpillars in a in, in a container or a plant pot or something as they're going along you can have them of where they're holding on to them as they're swimming along they can be holding balancing them on their noodles and things like that um, and you know they can pretend to be little caterpillars in the water if you're working on butterfly for instance um, and uh, you know those types of things too so these are really really popular to use all of these i'll put in the comments below of where i found them so you don't actually have to go and search for them but these two these um you can actually get these in the pack with with these that's what i did or you can actually find them separately but these are worms these are caterpillars as well so it just is a little bit sort of um <clears throat> not as much as these so depending on what you what your use are for them but they are brilliant too <clears throat> Other things for caterpillars I've got are these, uh, I found these sort of rattle toys, if you like. You can put them in the washing machine and just, you know, uh, they don't get mouldy as long as you wash them and dry them correctly. And there's a little bit of a hack of how you wash these um, with other pom-poms and things. Put them in a pillow, put them in a pillowcase, tie it, put them in the washing machine and then you don't have everything all over the place. So use a pillowcase, amazing. <clears throat> um and again these are really cool they can do shapes they can be doing their push and glides they can be doing their rolls holding onto them they can be doing floats and it gives them something to hold on to now children love holding on to things and they love doing uh, uh, they love moving um, and and they're learning constantly when they're moving but it also means it's we're able to, to we're able to use these types of things to help them in a unique way according to them so some children might not need them at all some children might not want to hold on to them or they might find that this actually is or this might actually might not feel very cool to them so you've got something that's different that is um is okay for them to touch or it might be that this is too big and you want something smaller it's some it, it, thinking of how the child learns is really important because it's our role and responsibility to make sure that they are learning in their way rather than them trying to learn from what we want them to do and it also means that you know you could be putting these in here and the the caterpillar is then in the egg and they're then going to be opening or blowing their bubbles to open it up to see what caterpillar they've got. Um, I've got eggs at the same colour, so I colour coordinate it. So again, they can work on uh, an extra learning opportunity of learning colours for the younger ones. But you can then add in different things of where the egg and the caterpillar turns into the butterfly. So I've now got these I can quickly show you. 
of where it's in one of the bundles. I've got these themes templates that you can print off to use. So I've got the big butterflies to be able to use the template for the butterflies here. Um, and there's another game here with this template too. So a little bit of a extra there for you. But I just wanted to show you this. You can have them already made. Baker Ross do make them. So you can use these ones as well. So you've also then got the caterpillar that turns into the butterfly. And I have a whole story on that bundle from when um, it gives you a poem of where you can work through the poem and it tells you the activities of wanting to do from caterpillar to butterfly. So have a, have a look at that and check that out. But it means that they can do what I call loose part play. And I love using loose part play. And this is for another video as well of where it gives them again, the child, the child, something that they enjoy doing. So using the eggs, I guess, is an example too, is that you can put, and we're going to be decorating a butterfly because the, uh, the caterpillar has changed into a butterfly now and we're decorating the beautiful butterfly. So you can put all these decorations, or not all of them, but some of them in the egg and it's good for you. You can even just put the, you can even just put those in the containers anyway around if you don't want to, if you don't want to or haven't got eggs, that's absolutely fine too. And then they will go and collect and then they decorate their flower, uh, that decorate their butterflies. Some climb up and out and they are really particular about where they want to put things. They want to, sometimes they actually want to continue to decorate their butterflies more. So we go and get more decorations. They might want to go on the wall crawl and collect more caterpillars. So we work to that. Um, they may choose that they want to do more on their back because they are... Um, they are floating like a butterfly that stopped on a flower and that they are resting. They might want to do that. So I have all these different things out that I have on the side. It's not all out for them. It's just in my area of my teaching toolkit area of where I keep all these different things. And if they particularly want to say something, I've got, say, for instance, these all in a container so they don't necessarily see it all. I've got buckets and things. I, I know they're there. And you're hot, you know, you could be placing them of where they don't see them, but you have them there. So if you're needing them or if a child's if you're sh if they're showing you signs of wanting to do X, Y and Z, you can be like, oh, I've got that and we can use that for that. So we're working with the children and working with what they are enjoying as opposed to what we need them to do. And this really helps, too. So having all these different things. I truly believe is well worth having in your teacher toolkit and you can be as extravagant as you like or you can be um, or you can make your own things too so making your own sort of creations as well so you can pick and choose what you wish to do so I hope this is helpful for you and um, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything um, I will be posting um, whenever <laughs> so make sure you do subscribe so that you don't miss any videos all right so enjoy your swimming lessons and um, hopefully you will enjoy changing from a caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly happy splashing take care bye